like flux beams. Flux beams are scanning the tube. Valence flux is active at 350 kilometers an hour. Oh, this is great. Is that a breadboard? Don't look at the man behind the curtain and just push, guys, push. Boom, and a rifle in sections coming up. <laughs> Hi. Yes, it's 2022 and Hyperloop is back. Well, not as Hyperloop, but as the as a Canadian company, Canada might be getting a thousand kilometer an hour vacuum tube train. Where have we heard this one before? <laughs> Thank you very much, Ed McCloskey. As soon as I saw this on Twitter, just went, I just had to press record. So I haven't looked at this. So let's go on a journey together, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> because we'll go on a greater journey than anyone ever will on a bloody vacuum hyperloop, that's for sure. And this is from CNN Travel. We've seen quality tech journalism from CNN Travel before, haven't we? Here it is. 13-year-old invents a better hyperloop. Still a stupid idea. Atmospheric railways and hyperloop. Anyway, I've done some second channel videos on this uh, before. I'll link those in. So, yeah, I'd <laughs> leave your mind at the door. CNN Travel. Maureen O'Hare. Should be ashamed of yourself. This is just utter rubbish. Anyway, there's a new company on the block to milk that Hyperloop cash cow. Um, Transpod to sucker all the investors in. Let's have a look at it. A Canadian company has unveiled plans for a fully electric train style vehicle which could travel at a thousand kilometers an hour and it claims would cost less than a plane ticket to, tri ticket to travel on. They all say that. Fluxjet was announced by Transpod in its home city of Toronto last month. It was a scaled down one ton version of what it terms the plane train hybrid. Oh, new wank terms. Uh, featuring in a live demonstration. Oh, maybe we can uh, find some video of this live demonstration, shall we? It's based on similar principles to the Hyperloop concept made famous by Elon Musk. Flux, oh, I could put Elon Musk in my uh, clickbaity title, just like all those AI generated channels do. Oh man, I'll get like a million clicks. Fluxjet will be propelled to ultra fast speed along a protected tube guideway using a groundbreaking technology based on a new field of physics called valence flux. Valence flux? Anyone? I've got to Google that. Valence flux. Canadian startup. Okay, here we go. Daily Mail's covered it as well. Canadian, CNN, India. It looks like it's a couple of days old. CNN just picked up the news. Valence, oh, this is from the IEEE. Extend intelligence, valence, flux, vixels, men, then uh, it doesn't, uh, well, well, they did say it was new. A, a new field of physics. The word surveillance comes from the French word valence, flux. Flux, no, surveillance systems, surveillance what? You can develop an information bearing concept of light propagation, Vixels and Vixel rays. No, we're gonna need some better links. We're gonna need a bigger boat than that. No, this valence flux thing is bullshit. I mean, come on, I mean. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Elon, the boring company, Valence Flux. Forum, nasaspaceflight.com. Oh, it's NASA. And here it is. It's Transpod. No, it's got nothing. What? The IEEE defirms the term. Yeah, they've noted the IEEE paper. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> Somebody's already, somebody on NASA's forums calling bullshit. Of course you're called bullshit on this. Sure enough, this is not CNN physics, but uh, uh, come on, seriously. Anyway, the pods are magnetically levabated. Yeah, heard it before. Wank, wank. The proposed first phase of what is estimated mean 18 only 18 billion dollar infrastructure hang on a sec cost of sydney metro which is our new uh we only had the one loop been 11 billion and 12 billion that'll be aussie bucks <laughs> even if this was possible which is not it's not going to cost 18 billion dollars this is just insane you couldn't even buy up the land for 18 billion dollars <laughs> They're just taking the piss. Both travel speed faster than a plane. Um, the three times out of a high speed train. Really? Um, I'm pretty sure I've been on the Shanghai Maglev at 430 kilometers an hour. It's not three times faster than that. And it actually works. And the thing with these high speed trains is that you have to go in a straight line to get these speeds. You can't go around bends. You cannot beat the laws of physics, Captain. You can't, you know, accelerate at hundreds of kilometers an hour around bends, let alone a thousand kilometers an hour. And where are you going to find? Oh, we'll talk about it later. What? They've actually got 550 million bucks finance. What sucker gave them 550 million? They've secured it, apparently. Currently in the research and development phase, you think? <laughs> Focusing on environmental assessment and land acquisition. <laughs> it reminds me of the Michael Keaton film about uh, the founding of McDonald's. I think it's called The Founder. Mm, is there a problem? A big one. You don't seem to realize what business you're in. 
You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. It's all about acquiring the land. I mean, yeah, come on, environmental assessment, land act. What, you're going to spend 550 million bucks on land acquisition environmental assessment? Well, at least you have the land to show for it afterwards, I guess. Sebastian Gendron, co-founder and CEO of Transport and full line connecting Calgary to Edmonton in 2027. 20, yeah, we're supposed to be riding on Hyperloops now and every Hyperloop endeavour has failed epically. And I won't go into all the engineering and physics reasons why. It's been covered to death by Thunderfoot and others in a whole a series of videos. And it's, just, it's, it's absolutely comical. Anyway, it says the new system will cut highway traffic massively as well as reducing CO2 emissions. Ooh, yeah, because it's all about saving the environment these days. Those projections do seem to involve a fair amount of conjecture about the next few years might plan out. You think? <laughs> we all know. Anyone with a half of an engineering brain cell knows how this is going to work out. It's going to be a complete and epic flop. It is not practical. Transpod says the experience will feel like accelerating smoothly in a jet runway and then coasting at full speed. So, uh, what, it's, it's, it's maglev? Um, Gendron tells CNN and his team estimates a flux yes will be transporting its first public passengers before 2035. At least they've put more than a decade on it. I'll give them that. Anyway, this is all utter, utter rubbish. So let's go to YouTube and see if we can actually um, find anything. Transports, Fluxjet can eclipse 620 miles an hour. There you go. They've got their own Fluxjet announcement. Let's go 140,000 views. Let's go in glorious 4K resolution. Whoa, get your popcorn ready. Okay, I'll just shut that off because there's um, just wanky music in this. Ignore all that flux jet. Look at this. Transpod. Look, oh, he's really, yeah, he's got his calculator out. He's <laughs> got that thumbs up for the real calculator. Um, he's working it all out. Yeah, look look at this. He's working it all out. Come on. Um, those, leave it in the comments down below what he's uh, doing here. I don't know. That's, oh, look at this. Double integrals. Oh, not that single integral rubbish. Double integral. Thank you very much. Oh, look at them. Here's the design team. Yeah, look, they're, yeah, they're working out. They've got a 3D printed thingamajig. What the heck is that? Ah, I bet they've got some calipers. Um, yep, and they've got a little PCB there with a little connector going off. Oh, look at the documentation. Thick as there. Look, at all their team, they're Skyping in. They're wearing their masks. And yep, here they are. Yep. That, oh, that's good. That's got to be the aerodynamics. Is that the aerodynamic shell on the front? And look, look at this. Oh, yeah, 3D animation. They spent some coin on that. They've got a drone shotter. Is that just stock footage? Look at this. Oh, they've got like a sleddy thing. Sleddy thing in the background. What's he working on here? Look at this. Oh, wow. It's got, what is that? That, oh, that's, that looks like a high tension thing. They're, um, they're ceramic insulators. Are they not? No, well, no, this thing here has a spring, but that, well, to me, you know, EE, that just looks like a, you know, a high, high tension insulator thing. Oh, look at their whiteboard, LAU forces. LAU, I guess that's what they're calling their pod, are they? Look, and it's going to be off the ground here. It's got little um, supports and stuff like that. Just put in a big vacuum tube. No worries, nothing can possibly go wrong there. There's more. Oh, look at this. They've got code. Yeah. Look at this, there's all the 3D animation. Looks like they're doing it all in-house, you know, really groovy. That's where they spend the coin. No, they, look, they're doing real world in this thing's happening, folks. Look at this. What is what is this structure? I don't know, but this is their life-size, is this their life-size demo they're assembling? Oh, hello, we've got a PCB. What the heck is going on there? Is that a breadboard? That that looks like a breadboard. Look, they've got some lead sticking out on the long lines. They, got, they, they, they look like tag tents. Just sticking out on long legs and that jumper wire is going over. That looks like a breadboard. The, the chip looks like it's in a socket though. What's what's going on? Is, is there any more to, more to it? It's flashing some LEDs. But what the heck is that doing? Oh, hey, here we go. Here's their, oh, here's their demo. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, beautiful. Look at the production values here. Look at the look at the people set up to actually produce this. This is this is the production desk. And it's running all the smoke and mirrors and light show and everything. And this pod is probably just going to scoot along this little test track on the little trolley. <laughs> Do we actually get to see it? Do we actually? And 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 who are these people? Is this all rent a crowd? I bet you this is a rent a crowd. But they know. Who knows? This could be the investors. This could be you know. This could be big money here. Oh yeah. Oh Fluxjet. Look at him. That that must be the CEO. He's giving the presentation himself. Oh look at this. Oh geez, that's a bit. That's a bit how you do it, isn't it? It's a bit wobbly. Oh, 
<laughs> I wouldn't like to go down that at a thousand kilometers an hour. Come on, Dave. It's a no. So is this their concept? Tubes like this. They're, they're, there's no way you'd go to this amount of effort. You know, because you got you got to have something different to the original Hyperloop. You know, you got to be able to like patent some way to actually do this. And I have, I have no idea. I assume they got patents. You know, you got to when you've got like half a billion dollars in funding, right? Um, <laughs> when, when I think about it that way, half a billion dollars. Come on. Um, anyway, this is all wonky. Um, yeah, so this is going to trottle down. This is going to rattle down the line at uh, 10 kilometers an hour, not at uh, a thousand. So, you know, a few orders of magnitude to go, but that's all right. Uh, it's just going to go on rollers or are these eventually going to be maglev? Like, is it going to have like four maglevs rather than just like your, your traditional two down the tube and then they're going to evacuate the tube? Um, Okay, it's less power consumption than maglev. One of the things with maglev um, doesn't make it all that viable. Although it's great. That Shanghai maglev is absolutely fantastic, but it's a bit of a white elephant because it costs too much and it costs too much to run, apparently, uh, power-wise. But, you know, you can just put solar panels on top of the tubes on the land you've acquired with your $100 trillion um, <laughs> after you boot everyone out of their homes and farmland and everything else. And it doesn't look like rollers. The animation's showing like it's got two little guidelines in there. So I guess that just stops it spinning, you know because you don't want it like <laughs> rifling through the <laughs> although that would be fun you can charge extra for that i would like every every like 10 every 10 100 kilometers or something just just put in a little spiral so it gives people a bit of a thrill you know um because you won't be able to see outside so you know you might as well might as well have a bit of thrill so i reckon a bit of little rifling section rifling sections coming up <laughs> That'd be so cool, you spin inside the tunnel. Oh man, that'd be great. I'll be back. This is such utter bullshit. Oh yeah, look, we'll just have it running through our mega city. Look at this, no worries. And yeah, it comes out, it's come out of its thing here. See, look, oh yeah, look, there's plenty of land right in the middle here, plenty of land where oh, land's just so plentiful in cities around the world that, yeah, you can just put it right through there. And as I said, like, it's got to be a straight line. Transpod.com announced, whoa, 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 what was that animation? Wow, what the heck, that look futuristic. Wow, look, look, oh, these things come out. Oh, right, they sort of like, they come out and go into the, and slip in. See the big coils on there? Yeah, so it's a magnetic lev thing. See, these are all copper loops. Uh, Thailand feasibility study. Look at this. Everyone's there. Jeez, there's more cameras than people. <laughs> Their latest study. See all the studies. Oh, please in your email address to receive the document. Oh, all right. Okay, I got the link. There it is. Uh, for those playing along at home, Transpod in Alberta. Summary of study on the implementation of a Transpod line from Calgary to Edmonton. Yeah, I'm sure you have the uh, the room coming out of Calgary and Edmonton. We won't look at that because one of their claims in this thing, Sydney to Brisbane. <laughs> and to connect Sydney to Brisbane. We might have a look at that because I'm kind of familiar with Sydney. Well, oh, geez, comprehensive. 63 pages. Geez, like we could go to town. Sorry, this is not going to be a highly researched and edited video. I'll link, I'll leave the link down below. You can read it yourself. But from Calgary to Red Deer, Edmonton. So they're going to finish in Red Deer. Don't know where Red Deer is, but oh yeah, look, look at this. Oh, and they're just going to bore through the uh, huge mountain like this. You know, is that granite or something over there? Like, yeah, let's just bore straight through the mountain. At least they're being realistic and knowing, yeah, you have to go in a straight line for these things to work. And you're just going to have the twin tubes like this. So, you know, if one of them like breaks down or something over your, you know, uh, what was it, 300 kilometers or uh, something like that, then, well, you've only got one more tunnel and then you can only go one direction. And, well, you know, where are the changeover points and stuff like that? Just, you know, regular trains, you can just, like, route around stuff and things like that. Um, and, and come on, <laughs> planes just fly a point to point. They already work. How, well, of course it's powered by sustainable solar electric. High potential investment opportunity for infrastructure investors. <laughs> infrastructure suckers. You know, and they just put wanky estimates like, you know, Twelve dollars Canadian bucks for the uh, fare and stuff like that. It's just utter bullshit. It will save eighteen million travel hours per year, which equates to one point nine billion. So the government can afford, or the Alberta and uh, just Alberta can afford to pump in one point nine billion because it'll save you that per year. Oh, it's a bargain. Safety benefits in a vacuum tube. Uh yeah. Um, might be a problem. 
So it, it's a typical wank feasibility study. You know, they've gone to quite a significant bit of detail in here. They've really spent some coin on doing this. Competitive landscape in high speed transportation, Hyperloop. <laughs> All of these companies. <laughs> are going out of business or already have done so, right? This is just transport. Oh, it's it's in a category all on its own because the infrastructure cost per kilometre is so low. They don't tell you how it's done, but they're saying it's not maglev. So what the? They put maglev train out here. I've been on it. It's 430 kilometres an hour. And you don't need a, a vacuum tube for it either. Um, It's really something when the other one comes past you, whipping past at 430 kilometres an hour. Oof. So it's really exciting stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, high-speed rail is already working. Maglev's already working. You know, you can argue about the economics of it and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it's mature technology. It works. Um, and, uh, yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. None of these are going to happen. I infrastructure costs per kilometre, okay? If you're talking about aeroplanes, you know, those things that fly in the air, it's way, way, way down here for the infrastructure cost. Because you just have to build a couple of airports and that's it. You don't need any infrastructure. You don't have to acquire land in between and all that sort of stuff. You just fly over the top. Should try it sometimes. Quite neat. Passenger flights. Safety is high. Yes, accidents are very rare. True. High. Really? Safety. In a in a three hundred in a couple hundred kilometer long vacuum tube. Okay, yeah, good luck with that because it's a protected tube environment. I'm pretty sure they have to, they've said it's a low, well, not vacuum, you know, it's a low pressure tube. Oh, look at this big spacious terminal like this. Where are you going to build this? <laughs> Come on. This is pure fantasy wank. It's not going to happen. They've got the departure board of all these different destinations. Where's your tube going? One destination. <laughs> what is it going to suddenly branch off to all these different destinations magically with your two tubes? Stations and route. Here is your transport station, right? This is in Calgary, Alberta. Elevated structure entering underground cut and cover. Okay, so they want to do cut and cover under the road. So they want to follow the road. So they're doing a cut and cover method. Okay, <laughs> good luck with that. Come on, this is it's, it's going to cost a fortune. I've got to admit, it's uh, you know they've gone to more extensive planning than I've seen before on uh, Hyperloop. So you know you, you've got to give it to them for that. But oh, transparent tubes! Wow, imagine the energy that goes into producing transparent aluminum. Transparent aluminum. Transparent aluminum. That's the ticket, laddie. It'd take years just to figure out the dynamics of this matrix. <laughs> yes, but you would be rich beyond the dreams of avarice. Wank, 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 wank. Ah, oh, here's, here's the cost. Look, oh, there you go. Total, 22 billion. Just sign here. But, hey, hats off to the amount of effort they put into the feasibility study. This is going to dupe a lot of politicians. It'll This will dupe a lot of investors, right? It really looks uh, schmick. You know, I'm, I'm surprised they show this dinky tube. You know, you're better off just showing nothing, really, and just, you know, having like a like a full-scale mock-up that they can walk into and sit in and stuff like that. Don't actually show dinky hardware like this. Um, pro tip. Oh, look, it's got look, it's got wheelchair access. Oh, load pa oh, quick to load panorama. Wow, this is fantastic. Look, look at these NPCs here. Wow, these NPCs look happy. Wow, because they're about to go on their uh, death trap in the hyper tube. Here you have it. This is what the interior is going to look like here. Wow, somebody's gone to town on this website. No, this is probably a 3D render of their actual pod. Because uh, this is how you got to suck people in is with the 3D renders. Transpod system. Look at this. Oh, this one's got four lines. The city of the future. I will not accept your cookies and I will not accept your premise of this thing actually <laughs> being remotely viable. This looks much smaller than the huge length um, thing we just saw there with all the seats. Got some luggage space there in the back, and the guy in the wheelchair's there. He's catered for, no worries. Oh, you've got eco configuration. Oh, pressurized doors, there you go. Look at that. They've, I've got to admit, this is actually more impressive than Hyperloop. This is, you know, still a complete impractical boondoggle. It's just utter garbage. And then it's going along the Fluxway, an atmospheric, oh, I love the name, the Fluxway. Yeah, mate, I'm just hopping on the flux way. I'll be there in a minute. Flux jet traveling between urban stations. Okay, so this is just, yeah, they're just magnetically powering these things. And then it can go, presumably seamlessly, from, yeah, here we go. We go en entering the airlock. Block valve, A1 opening. Pumps and valves reduce air pressure in the chamber, uh, allowing flux jet to enter a high speed zone. Yep, see, all this sort of stuff takes time. And then you've got to do the rest of this in a straight line. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Oh, here we go. We're accelerating. 30 k's an hour, come on. 300 k's an hour. At least we're still going straight. 
power pickup deploy-in. Yeah, here it is. So this is the power pickup. It's it's a non-contact thing, right? No, no, it's scraping along. Look, it's receiving power from grip. Plasma state, it's stabilized with plasma. They've got linear, levitation linear engines, people. Four levitation engines deploying. Vehicle guide is switching to primary mode. This is some, oh, look at this, engine core, laminated steel wafers. Magnetic field movement, there you go. Wow, Tesla would be proud. Sensors, the sensors, because you can't have it like, you know, crashing into the side and stuff like, landing gear, it's got landing gear retraction. Okay, so it just rolls on the things. Oh, wow, man, they've thought of everything. It's got radar, has it? Flux beams, flux beams are scanning the tube. Valence flux is active at 350 kilometers an hour. Real-time position adjustment. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is so going to work. All sequences completed. Anyone who's done high school physics is just laughing their head off. Oh, wow. Well, at, at least at least it's still going straight, right? Full speed operation ending at 1,000 kilometers an hour. Geez, you better slow down quick. You're close to the city there. These curtains covering biodiversity friendly mitigate something. Of course it does. That is wonderful. I'll, I'll accept your cookies now. After that, that is so impressive. I'm going to accept all your cookies. Contactless connection enabled, plasma stabilized, liquid coolant, electric current, control system C, power rail, plasma monitoring. So what it's levitating on plasma or something, is it? Free space, retracted position, magnetic flux polarity, right? So it's going to propel this thing along. Yet I guarantee that the one they're demoing doesn't do this. It, it, it doesn't do this. I mean, let's just look. Yeah, so here's inside here, right? They've they just got it on a couple of rollers, right? There's none of their patented technology. Where's their plasma flux? Where's their valence uh, wankery or whatever it is? Don't look at the man behind the curtain and just push, guys, push. Boom, and it, com <laughs> it comes out. I don't think it's... No, I'm sure it's better than that. So I took a 4K screenshot of this and look, look, you can, like, it, it's just sitting on rollers down here. It's just sitting on rollers. <laughs> Look how wonky it is. No, come on. They're, they're absolutely taking the piss here. No, 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 no. This is not going to happen. No, you are not going to get a thousand kilometer vacuum tube train in uh, Canada or Alberta or anywhere like that. It's just like, like oh. it's like Sydney, for example, right? I mean, like, where are you going to do it? Here's Sydney Airport. So presumably you want to hook it up to Sydney Airport if you go into uh, Brisbane. Where's it going to be, right? There's... there's <laughs> It's going to have to be underground. Then you're going to have to build another tunnel going under the Harbour Bridge. Here's the existing tunnel, right? We've already built one that goes under here. It cost, I don't know how many billions, Sydney Sydney Harbour Tunnel. Yeah, but that was $1992, right? This would cost, you know, several billion dollars today. We've got the Sydney Harbour Tunnel, and then you'd have to dig all through the North Shore and dig more tunnels. Like, Sydney's like just a gigantic harbour, right? It's one of the world's biggest natural harbors sydney is like it goes all the way into Parramatta here it goes it wakes you know snakes its way all the waterways snake their way all the way in here no look they're going to go through karingai chase national park where are you going to go uh are you going to follow the m1 right up i mean you know check out how wiggly the m1 is right you're going to whiz all the way up to n1 how the hell are you going to get a straight line from sydney to Brisbane. You couldn't even get from Sydney to freaking Newcastle. Look at this. You gotta go past Coffs Harbour, past Byron Bay, which is the easternmost uh, point of Australia, by the way. And here's Queensland. Here's the line that leads up to Queensland. Here's the Gold Coast. So you might end, and there's Brisbane. You gotta have a straight line. At best, like gentle curves that go like tens of kilometres radius, you know, or something. I don't know. You can calculate the physics. Leave it in the comments down below. It's just utter bullshit. There is not the flat land available. Go look at a topograph map sometime of Sydney. In fact, I've got one. Here you go. I might have to link in the video when I went to the Brickman uh, Lego exhibition. I had a look around the uh, museum here. Topographical relief map. And that's the relief map of New South Wales. Look at all this you have to get through. All this, all these different colours, right? Yeah, it's nice and flat out here in the plains out west where the dirt's all red, you know. But look, you are got to go through all this shit to get to Sydney's like about here or something, right? And you got to go all the way up to... No, 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 no. Like, like this is just... Utter, utter bullshit. Just stop it. It's not going to happen. And CNN, shame on you. This is absolute. And any anyone else who covers this absolute and utter bullshit. The European Regional Development Fund gave the money 
So yes, my European viewers, there you go. You can uh, complain to the European Regional Development Fund, although I'm sure you've got no say in it whatsoever. They've actually been going since 2015. And then MOU, whatever, some sort of Alberta, government of Alberta. And so they paid something into this boondoggle. And then, of course, when COVID came around, they jumped on the, oh, the transport. We, we're such technical innovators. We can do the medical ventilator. You remember all the medical ventilator projects that popped up? Yeah, they are in that. Of course they were. There are actually three industrial partnerships have been signed at the Canadian Embassy in Paris. Construction permit. They've got their construction permit. <laughs> when was that? 2018. Show us what you've actually constructed. <laughs> they become the first tube transportation company to confirm finance of a multi-billion dollar infrastructure project. Broughton Capital Group, in cooperation with Serico, no idea, have issued terms to provide a combined $550 million finance and master EPC arrangement. Don't know what that is, leave it in the comments if you know, which includes significant involvement from Canadian contractors to accelerate development transport line between Edmonton and Calgary to drive economic growth. What suckers? Broughton Capital Group, you've just flushed your money completely down the toilet, you idiots. This is never going to amount to anything. Unbelievable. If you're lucky, you might be. Able, they might have acquired some land, which then, when they go tits up, you can just resell the land, I guess. But this Serico is a Chinese state-owned enterprise. Of course, it is. Broughton Capital have a highly experienced, first-class team of idiots who couldn't see that this was based on complete wacky bullshit, new physics, <laughs> plasma valence fields, and crap. I mean. Come on! Hyperloop was bad enough. I mean, haven't you seen how all the other Hyperloop ones have failed? But this is, oh no, this is Hyperloop, but we've got wacky valence magnetic fields. It's just, no! Oh, it's sad. It really is. Come on, where? Basic critical thinking skills, basic physics knowledge, you know, minutes on Google to figure out what these uh, this new physics is that that's powering your half million dollar investment that you've just uh, half billion dollar investment you've just put in oh come on this is unbelievable absolute suckers ah uh, just look no, I'm done. I put as much effort into this video as this idea deserves, which is zero. <laughs> this is going to epically fail, bank every cent you've got on it. If you could short this thing, short it. Look at this, Discovery Channel. <laughs> yeah, they were doing this five years ago. The uh, grift is real in this one. So here's their old one. So this is like the original Hyperloop linear induction motor. This is their original concept, and then they discovered the flux capacitor, which is what makes Hyperloop possible. <laughs> Look at this thing! Look at this! Oh my goodness! Oh! Anyway, that has nothing to do with the current one. That's that's just for shits and giggles. And the Startup Canada Innovation Award in 2018, four years ago, won an Innovation Award. And yeah, I downloaded their media kit. And look, right, here's their executive uh, team and Ryan Jansen, who wrote that paper. Jansen's innovations have created entirely new fields of research, including valence flux. So he's the guy who did it. Extra missive optics, swarm modulation, the world's first PLC research. He's led to advanced acoustics, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, look, as it turns out, yeah, Ryan Jansen is, he published this in IEEE, right? He's invented this new physics called valence flux, and it's all to do with sensory modalities and uh, auditory service of a what? Valence flux and a valence field are proposed in this work and can be thought of as an aggregate spatial integral of bidirectional reflectance distribution functions, BRDF. To begin, we reverse the direction of light is normally understood. So they're just reversing the direction of light, okay. We can develop an information bearing concept of light propagation. Vixels, Vixel rays, can be understood as being emitted from a camera. Right, so I sign in. I don't have an IEEE account. I am a senior member of the IEEE, but I don't think I have access to this. But what has any of this got to do with electromagnetic linear uh, propulsion? Hang on, I found the video of the event, or at least part of it. Um, it's in a popular science article here. Yeah, great journalism again. They've actually covered this, but at least they provide actually really useful links, which we'll look at. This super fast jet train would, trap, uh, would tap into a whole new field of physics. It's a plane, it's a train, it's the Hyperloop flux jet from Transpod. Thank you, Charlotte Hugh. It taps into a new field of physics called valence flux. So they again confirm they've raised 550 million bucks to uh, do this. Calgary, Alberta. 
Yoda is, is really back in this thing. Anyway, this is a link to some of uh, the video here. And uh, according to Inverse, the technology uses attracting magnets to float the fuck jet vehicle in the steel tunnel. Additionally, the system will contain an electrical arc like that in some train and subway systems. Unfortunately, they've provided some links here, which we can take a look at here. Um, a wild new plane train hybrid could whoosh you into your destination if it can get off the ground. <laughs> yeah, minor problem. Transpod will levitate the vehicle through the force of attraction and send power through an electrical arc. These details can make the system smoother and more efficient. This technology is already employed on fancy high-speed trains in China, Japan, and South Korea, which run at oh, which can run over 600 miles per hour. Really? There's high-speed trains that run over 600 miles per hour? I don't think so. This is why Transpod will flip the script and use attraction, not repulsion, to float the flux jet. The steel tunnel will attract the magnet attached to the top of the vehicle and keep about a centimetre gap between the tunnel and the flux jet. Oh, so we've gone from a millimetre to a centimetre. Transport aims to incorporate an electrical arc, somewhat similar to a component of subways that shoots electricity on a continuous basis into a flux jet capsule. The system is also equipped with a predictive suspension, meaning that the vehicle's electromagnetic field can react to bumps in the infrastructure and ensure a comfortable experience for ride. And it also links over to this... Uh, electrical arc power collection for high-speed uh, trains. This is actually, once again, IEEE. This is actually December 1976. It's a tad old, but uh, I don't know who gave them the reference. I would presume that Transpod gave them the reference, but anyway, because, you know, it's an obscure thing to find. Anyway, I'll link to it. So here's the video. It's got 12,000 views. It's unlisted, okay, which is why I couldn't find it before, and it's from Studio Centria. I assume this is, like, the company that hired to actually, uh, you know, record the event and actually produce this video. It's not a very good video and only contains um, really hacked up snippets of the actual presentation, but let's give it a go. The Fluxjet is a bold innovation. I'm Mustafa Shaheen, Edmonton Global's Executive Vice President. The yeah. Transpod Fluxjet line is an exciting project that will enhance regional connections and accelerate transportation at a massive scale. Massive scale. The Fluxjet is an exciting major project that will put a global spotlight Fluxjet on Canada and Alberta. Project. We look forward to participating we in new industries and bold new projects new that revolutionize projects transportation that revolutionize. as we know it Who is this to guy? help us reach our net zero goals by 2050. Net, net zero. Got to reach the Transpod net zero. Flux Jet line so is at a mass scale. I assume he's the Flux Jet is a bold leap forward in technology that we're incredibly excited about we're and to be part of. Excited about to be part of What's exciting about that is we're actually <laughs> using plasma. Plasma. To get power to the vehicle. Plasma. Is this this electrical what the heck arc is they're plasma? talking about? Well, who here has seen the Northern Lights? The Northern Lights. Let's take a look. Ionized plasma. And that's actually plasma up there. Magic. So we blows. can just bring that to under our train to support it. Is harnessing plasma harnessing. to make it work. And that is groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. I think it's pretty much just magnetic levitation. And like uh, this video is cut like this. Um, it, like there's no audio in parts of it. It's really very poorly cut. I am not muting the audio in this thing, but it includes snippets of the event. See, now here's the valence flux. Valence flux is the technology that this guy invented. That's why he's talking about, you know, things coming out of the camera or whatever. It's basically a camera that <laughs> measures where they are. And we'll see this in a minute. Um, and this is the positional tracking thing to help them like dynamically stabilize this thing. So it's not, you know, <laughs> going to slam into the uh, rails, although they're only a short distance away from the rails, as we'll see in a minute. And then it's just magnetic flux. Yeah. It's just maglev. Yet they say it's not maglev. What we're announcing oh. is something we can call the flux jet. Oh, the excitement. Can you feel it? It's jobsian level. We actually start to see detail now. Ladies and gentlemen. They've actually gone to a lot a of effort in there. Baby flux jet. Baby flux jet. Yay, the crowd so. go wild. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> the applause sign comes up. <laughs> is he, did no the audio Alberta there? The Alberta project is $18 billion. Uh, that's for the, to construct the full scale line from Calgary to Edmonton. <laughs> You're not going to do it for 18 billion. Uh, so the full line. And I can now announce that that project that you may have heard about in the news is going to be a flux jet line. 
The Fluxjet is different from an aircraft, and it's different from a train. Not it's from a, a whole new type of vehicle, a new no, category. No, it's a maglev. And this is a vehicle to carry passengers between cities Just like at a over 1,000 kilometers per hour. Yeah, nah. Not going to happen. Just look at those gaps. So yeah, I can stick are. this paper, piece of paper in here. There you go. And so, whoop, let's just get that there. There we go. Okay, this is so there's a floating. gap there. The, the, so there's the no coils. contact. This looks all very, so it's, it's all very homemade, in real time and that's fine. And lifting this one ton of weight. So it's like lifting up your car on a very smooth cushion of uh, magnetic waves. So now we're pushing that one ton weight just by hand in levitation like the, only oh, mode. Did it just move there? And, uh, and so still keeping that, that gap there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's maglev. It, it uses like four points, but you know, maglev has, uh, there's a couple of different techniques to how like the maglev sits in the rail and stuff like that. Um, uh, that but this is just another maglev. There's nothing magical about this, and the valence flux bullshit is just the camera. Let's out also the front see the computer see. vision. So right the now, it's, it's vision. covered Here's in sensors the all over. Flux. So I'm just waving Ooh. the hello. Hello. Wave at the front of there. Hello. Okay, this is the front. That's back. So this is just one of the ah. There is one of the sensors. See all the computer vision. So it's tra tracking the guideway in real time. Uh, it's, it's incredible the amount of <laughs> that's the valence communication flux. that's going on. This thing. So they put a lot of coin into um. this. I sure am. I'd love to be in Montreal in 30 minutes. It stands <laughs> up because it's made in Canada, and Canada made in is Canada. represent the world in transport Woo! travel. Canada. And I've got to wonder, the, the, all these flashy LEDs down here, is that from the, like, the breadboardy thing that we actually saw before? The total like, Alberta... <laughs> so why this doesn't exist on their actual own website? Why can't we see the full presentation? Why? <laughs> if you can find it, please leave it in the link down below. And if we go back to this 4K image, as I said before, like, look, it's sitting on rollers here. These, these, these rollers are touching, right? That is why they only showed you the, um, the, you know, putting the paper between the maglev at the top here, where there, sure enough, is a gap. Was this thing even, like, energized at all? Like, how does it maglevy against, against these poles? It doesn't. Please, a transpod, tell me I'm wrong. Leave your official uh, thing down in the comments and tell us that you're actually levitating here. I'll pin your comment down below. This is not going to be practical, but hey, they spent a lot of coin on this, um, and it looks really good, and this is going to sucker a lot of people in. So what they're basically doing here is combining traditional maglev with like a, an electric arc power system to actually power the uh, pod itself. And you know, sure enough, this is like a thing in trains, and here's like some video of like, here it is here. Yep, there's your plasma. There's your electric arc. <laughs> this is the plasma you'll be floating on. <laughs> Good luck with that. Here's some more like, you know, I mean, come on. Yeah, there's plasma in there. Absolutely. It's just an ionized arc getting apparently getting power over to it. In this video, they don't actually demonstrate any power transfer to the pod. It's just like floating there. So where's all your plasma arc that it's <laughs> it's just floating on magnets. It's not actually plasma arcing and powering the whole thing. So yeah. Just no, 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 no. A reduced pressure slash vacuum hyperloop will never, ever be practical. This, I, like, it won't even go into just the engineering issues involved with, like, getting this thing to actually work, let alone the safety issues and the land issues and just the, and, and the inflexibility of it and the fact that if you want to go at the speeds uh, they're talking about, it has to be in a straight line or incredibly gentle curves and you'd have to do the whole thing underground if you wanted to, like, you'd have to, you know, <laughs> bore through mountains and you can't do it for, like, $18 billion. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It's never going to be practical ever, ever. We have railway, we have high-speed railway, we have maglev, perfectly fine, and then we have even bus interstate uh, travel, and then for point-to-point -point stuff, you know, between major cities and countries around the world, we've got planes, and they work perfectly fine. All the infrastructure is incredibly safe and reliable, and et cetera, et cetera, and it's not too pricey, you know, in the scheme of the, this is utter boondoggle is never going to work and suckers keep pouring money into this and this will suck in people who just you know don't have a critical thinking mindset and it's so you know which our politicians don't have investors don't you would think that you know sophisticated investors would have a you know a good <laughs> bullshit detector you know like but no no we all thought hyperloop 
was stupid, right? We all, <laughs> all the engineers out there knew it, right? This is just the dumbest idea ever. And then you put new physics on top of it. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Powered by the flux capacitor. Thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time. <laughs>